everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday. Well, what a week we've had. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had no electricity or heat from Sunday night until Thursday morning. And the temperatures were in the teens and the 20s. We are not used to that. No. It was not a pleasant time. It was cold. It was freezing. Luckily, we have a fireplace. So we were able to stay somewhat warm. Um, we had to only had to boil water for one day, but there are millions of Texans, including here in Houston, who are still boiling water. Yeah. So it's just been a terrible mess. Yeah. That's a kind way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a G-rated way of saying it. Yeah. We finally got our internet back on Friday, so we're so much luckier than, than many people. But this piling on is getting out of hand. Yeah, it's one thing after another. Oh my gosh. It's like 2021 is 2020's smaller, younger, meaner brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been something, I'll tell you. But we've been very lucky. We we really have fared better than a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but my new motto is, it's all good until the aliens land. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I have a gift for it. I'm just going to give a motor girl and say, welcome. <laughs> so, I've been waiting. So anyway, if you placed an order with us this week... This past week, uh, we'll get it out to you in the next couple of days. We we were uh, stranded in the house. We were stranded in the house, and then the first day that we could go out cautiously, um, the warehouse was locked. Yeah. And I haven't seen a UPS truck down the street. UPS, oh. FedEx, Amazon. We haven't had mail since the 13th, and today's the 21st. So, yeah. so it's... Hang not, in there with us, guys. Not the normal routine <laughs> down here, you know. And I'm sure that people up north are thinking, what's the big deal? It's only 20 degrees. I mean, Well, we're just not prepared for it. And clearly our, our electrical grid was not prepared for it. Yeah. But let's I, have a nice, boring week. What do you say? I would love a boring week. Yeah. Uh, my version is to put one comic in front of another. So I like that idea. We have another comic coming up this week. We do. Serial number two will be in stores on Wednesday. Just... If you miss serial number one, the reprint is in stores or on our website. Mark your calendars for April 9th and 10th for Terry Moore Live. We'll have uh, Terry will be doing some live panels, signings, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm told we'll have some original art. We'll have some uh, serial art and some ever art that has not been up yet. Oh, so that'll be exciting. The ever's never been out. So as as well as all the other series, um, and we'll also be doing Studio Sunday Live on the 11th. Yes. Oh man, I'm gonna have to get out of my jammies. <laughs> You will be on camera. I will be on camera. I know I know people are just thrilled about that. <laughs> Mystery voice. So really that's all I have today. It's it's been another unprecedented week and I'm hoping that I don't have to say that again next weekend. Man, what a bunch of drama. Man, it's so, right. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we were just trying to stay warm and and alive at that point. <laughs> Like a survival movie, a pathetic yeah, survival movie. It was movie pretty pathetic in our wasn't house. It? Yeah. yeah, it's not exactly like we were stuck, lost in the Alaskan wilderness. You know, I like those movies, by the way. I'm really sad. All my plants died. Every single plant in our yard died. So all of our tropical plants. All of our tropical plants. So anyway, we'll get through it. We don't have any Canadian plants. Like I said, it's all good until the aliens land. Bring it. <laughs> Don't say that. You know, we keep landing on their planets. We're going to make one of them mad. <laughs> okay, so are you ready for the hot seat? Yeah. So our first question is from Tim, and he says, The Frankenstein video actually made me think of a question for Terry. Early on, did he always work in the drawing slash art field? I am curious about his early career. I think you've touched on this before, but uh, maybe you can expand on it a little bit. What did you do before you drew comics? <laughs> I was a videotape editor, and um, I did that. It was it was it's a good career. It helped me a lot, I think, in my art uh, because I, I spent a lot of time looking at um, actors doing their things and emoting and picking the best best take, the best moment, the best frame. All that relates to you know storytelling. So um, I. I was drawing at home, 
and then noticed that the independent comics were starting to hit the comic stores in a big way. Uh, Jeff Smith and all those guys. And I was very inspired by them and I thought, I, um, I want to try it. So I made my first comic, Strangers in Paradise, and took it around to a convention and showed it to retailers and got encouragement and met Jeff Smith. He gave me a lot of pointers. And once you let people know what you want to do, they help you. So that's how we got into comics. I was in comics for about a year and a half before I went back to Robin and said, I need help. <laughs> it this, wasn't even a year and a half. It wasn't even a year. Uh -uh. Um, it's hard to do by yourself. It's good to have a, a partner of some sort to help you. So there's a lot going to it if you're going to publish your own book. Yeah, especially, you... especially if you were successful because you don't have time to continue to draw and to do all the business side of it. That's exactly so, it. That's exactly it. It's hard to to turn that right brain off and the left brain on and vice versa. Exactly. So. It's really good for you as an artist or a creator to be able to stay in the creative mode every day. Um, some I know a lot of artists who are very down to earth and can do left brain, right brain at the flip flick of a switch. I can't. Um, no, you can't. I cannot. <laughs> I just live on one side. So Robin uh, uh, takes up the practical side of the business and, and it's a publishing business, you know. You need somebody level-headed and uh, smart um, otherwise. Well, and I think that's why there aren't as many independent creators anymore because it does, it is, uh, there's a whole side to it that takes really a full team to keep things moving forward. And it didn't, it wasn't quite that way when you first started. It just it grew. I really don't even know what Robin does. The stuff that she has going on with business and talking to people, she has a whole other world of contacts, business contacts, who are comic book related. Um, the distributors, the, the man who oversees the, all the trucking and the shipping out of the printer plant and then diamond plants and all that. I don't know. If, if Robin stopped, I stopped. <laughs> I'd have to hey, go work let me tell Jeff. you, I'm going to stop soon. <laughs> I'd be knocking on Frank Cho's door. Do you need, a, do you need an assistant? <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's a business. So. so, you were a videotape editor. Mm -hmm. And I will, um, I'll tell you a little story that started all that. Was Our son was about five or six, and he was learning how to read, and he was very unhappy about it. He did not like to read the books that they were giving them. And Terry said, I'm going to take him to the comic book shop and see if there is anything there that he might be interested in, like Donald Duck or whatever. It's Saturday morning cartoon shows. Right. And when you went and took him, that's when you saw these indie comics. Exactly. And there was kind of an indie comic um, surge at that time. Yeah. There were several independent comic book artists. And you came home and said, I think I can do this. And I said, take out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever in your life just looked at something or watched somebody do something and you think, I think I can do that. I think, you know, that's for me. That was it. And Terry's pretty introverted. And he, he um, drew up the first issue of Strangers in Paradise. And then he went off one afternoon and... When he came back, he said he'd been at a local comic book shop that was in a hotel, and he had passed this stuff around, and I was super impressed that he would hmm. make that leap. At, at a show, a little comic book show in the hotel, and, you know, everybody's in one room, and I just went from booth to booth and showed it. And you met a, a um, DC editor there, and she said, you're the real thing. Go for it. I'm, I met Patty Cheris at DC. She was there with John Bogdanovi, and he was currently the Superman artist. And I showed, I got in line, showed them the stuff, and John said, it looks pretty good. You need to work on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Patty said, uh, uh, nice storytelling flow. She didn't read it. She's just going page to page and seeing the flow of the visual storytelling. And she took me over to the booth and introduced me to uh, the editors there. And I had met three or four editors, junior editors, and then at the end of the line was Archie Goodwin. And I got to talk to Archie and he said, well, we could put you on some team books 
you know, put you like short stories in the back of an anthology or team books, get you started. And I, I went home feeling on top of the world. And the famous true story is that when I went home with that success story, my first encouragement, um, that day or the next day was a rejection letter from DC in the mail when I had mailed the stuff to the front office in New York and it didn't get past the front office in New York, came right back. But when I went in person uh, and let them know I'm real, you know, it went a lot better. That's one of the reasons why we all love comic conventions. You know, it's good to go out and meet people and let them know you're real. So okay. that's my story. Yes, it is. It's, it's a true story. Okay, so um, our second question is from Tony. Hi, Tony. And these are kind of, this is, I think it was Stephen Colbert had a list and Tony sent it to me. And so these questions are kind of a little more personal. Mm. Um, one thing you own that you should really throw out. Oh, let me, <laughs> let me just get started Don't get here. her started. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Oh, I can see 10 things right now. One thing that I own I should throw out is, um, I don't know. He would not throw it's away anything, precious. yes. It's, it's every bit of it's precious. Uh, probably what I should throw out is some of the really um, old books that are silly. Um, you know, that I don't know why I keep them. I don't read them anymore. But I well, have and you must have a books. thousand pens and pencils. I do have a lot of, uh, you know, pens and pencils. And then he'll go to the art store and come home with, you know, 15 more. And I'll say, what about all these in the in the cabinet? And you'll say, well, those are for something else. You guys know very well that what I really use is just like right here, right? And it's, you know, the, this little set of pens and the brush and one pencil. But over there in the cabinet, I have a miniature art store and it's this stuff that collected. I mean, I have stuff that I bought year one. The same year that we tell this story of how I got started, I went out and bought some stuff that is still here with me. You know, Why? Why, Terry? Some of it just doesn't wear out. This is the original lettering guide I bought year I know, one. but you don't have a thousand of those. I have a backup. Why do you have a thousand pencils? And I have pens? a backup to this, and I don't answer my question, Mister. And Moore. I don't tell you where it is because you're going to say you never, you never going to need this. It's just it's like, yeah. Answer my question, Mister. Moore. I really need this. <laughs> I really need this. I don't know when I'm going to use it, but I really need it. <laughs> so I just noticed when you backed up there that your pens are different color. I yeah, I they are. I I'm trying out. Uh, you know, I usually use the uh, tan colored microns and right now I'm trying these out, the Stadler pigment liner. Um, and the reason why is because another artist replied on one of the previous videos that they prefer this one because it never bleeds. And when I use the microns on my art paper and then I scan it and then I blow it up to 100% to work on something really small, I can see the bleed, the pebbling on the edge of the tooth of the paper. So I'm hoping that this will not never do that. This leaves a clear line. Um, because even though you can't see the bleed in, when you're looking at the printed page on the comic reduced, um, it still adds to a, a less focused effect. And the original art is so much more focused than the print art. Um, I'm trying to do what I can to get the best. So does that mean I can throw away all no. this? No. <laughs> you cannot throw away the microns. Leave them alone. Okay, well then that's it for me. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? No, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that we survived the week and our hearts and minds are with everyone who is still uh, affected and uh, trying to regroup. So what are you drawing today? Uh, today I'm working on a uh, cover for the 2021 sketchbook, which is not going to be the convention size thing. We're planning, you know, a trade paperback. So I need a, a sketch cover and I'm working on that today. And I thought maybe you'd like to watch me work my way through this, figure out how I'm going to do this. So that's what we're doing. We're drawing, drawing and talking today. Okay. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you for your questions. Don't thank me. Thank Tony and Tim. Thank you, Tony and Tim. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys next week. Meet Terry right back here. Okay, good meet you. Okay, so I have my page ready. Here is my target area. 
And the sketch I want to do um, is this one. And this is a printout from my computer. Um, obviously, for the cover of a book, she's not going to be topless. So don't worry about that. Uh, but in the art studio, there's clothes come and go. <laughs> um, so I've been working on redrawing this uh, for this cover for the final art. And I worked out, you know, I, I try ideas, you know, on top of each other. And, and I tried making a gap on the computer to get some more distance there because I thought, you know, that's a little squeezed. And if you think about it, um, that's okay, but that actually works a little better for me. So on the computer, I put the gap there. Why would I bother doing that? Because it's so easy on the computer to look at changes real fast and see what you're going to do as opposed to spend um, a lot of time redrawing that, erase it, redraw it a little higher, erase it, redraw it, you know, you know what I mean? That's how people did it in 1901. So, um... What I'm going to do is, in, to prevent using a 1901 tactic, I am going to lightbox my own art and transfer it to this, which is trickier than it sounds because when you get the lightbox, these lines get fatter and blurrier, and um, you don't have the accuracy that you might think you do. So what you're, all you can really accomplish on a lightbox is to get it in place and get the basic form on there. I like this little guy. It's, uh, what is that, 11 by 14 or something like that? It's not that huge thing on the floor, um, but it's very cool. Okay, I'll show you how I do this. If I get this in position and then put this here, there's nothing to tape it down. So what I do Use my white tape, which is supposed to be forgiving on paper. And I just kind of get this positioned. And right now what I'm looking at is vertical. Is Francine in the vertical position? Could choose chair? Yes. The answer is yes. So I'm going to put the tape on the top and the bottom. And this is hold it down. And then I put two other tapes upside down on this corner. Terry, what are you doing? What the heck? What the heck and gosh? Ta-da. You see where I'm going with this. Holding up the edges so that I can move it, I'm now getting the art exactly where I want it on the page. This is saving me so much draw, redraw, erase, redraw. And then in a second, I'm going to tell you why I picked where I picked. Okay. Ta-da, we're on. Okay, um, what I'm thinking about when I lay it on the page is that the title goes up here. This is going to say my name, whatever it is that day, and 2021 sketchbook up here. There's the title of the comic. Here's the logo, and here's the price. So I, can, I know that that's right there, which leaves... This part from here on up is what shows on comic books rack. So when it gets to the comic book store, uh, if they if they rack it in the racks, which they won't on a trade, but you know that you're probably going to see about that much of your comic in a, on the wall in a comic shop. So you want something right there. If there's nothing there, all you have is the title. So in this layout, you would at least have Francine looking out at us over the rack. But also, uh, right about here is the fee point on this triangle, this rectangle, I'm sorry. So there's a fee point right here and right here. That's about where they are. And you'll notice that that's exactly where Kachu's eyes are. So the first thing you're going to see when you look at this layout is Francine looking back at you, and then your eye is going to follow. Well, you probably will look at her first, but then... You will easily find Kachu's face because it's at a fee point. And the fee points are probably about right in there. So the middle of her face is right there at the 
this distance right here is, you know, like uh, 0.618 of the over, oh, this is actually this side, 0.618 routine. Okay, so um, now what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going, see how blurry this is? It's like drawing a ghost, but you can tell where the main figure is. So there's still some uh, ability required to correctly and, and transfer this and uh, then fix it on the real page because you're gonna have to fix this drawing. Um, the line weights are no good anymore. Uh, it's gonna be hard to see the things like the eyes and the details on the face. So you, these things can get really messed up in a light box transfer and you're gonna have to um, use your artistic ability to repair this transfer. So what you do is you spend about five or 10 minutes transferring it with, on a, with pencil, and then you spend the next hour fixing the transfer, and that's when you get back to drawing again. But at least you're drawing on, on placements that are in the right place. At least you know you're not wasting your time drawing a chew an inch and a half low, and then decide, oh crap, I need to plus her, place her higher. That kind of thing. Um, and I probably will move the circle up a little bit and let it be underneath the logo, just so the circle is favoring the top half of the page. That's it. If I have the circle at the middle point, it's gonna look low. It actually wants to favor on where your eye focus is. So the circle is actually kind of like your, your eye focus on what I care about is all up here. And this down here is just foundation. Okay, so now it's time to do the transfer, and I'm just going to rough in the outlines, uh, the main marking points there. And as I look at the drawing the top of the hair, I'm, I'm thinking about where the top of the skull actually is and allowing for uh, thick hair to be on top of that. So that hairline is not the skull line. It's uh, an inch or so above the skull. You have to know that. This uh, pose that we're in, both of them have their heads turned in a uh, way that, you know, it could easily look like it's uncomfortable. So you really have to be careful between just uh, someone simply turning their head versus uh, I pull, I turn their head around too much in the drawing and it looks unnatural. Um, so, and I'm fixing a lot of things here. I know that I'm going to add... Uh, this Victorian looking clothing hanging off her waist. Um, and then I'm going after the uh, Kachu pose. What, the same thing with her head turn. It's I'm gonna back off a little bit on that. You see how I move the ear forward a little bit? Uh, less of a turn on the head so it doesn't look like we're unnatural. Um, I need to make sure they have different hair lengths. I don't keep drawing the same hair. And same thing here, I'm going to re make her waist a little longer and her legs a little longer than is in the sketch. So you can see me draw past the foot and do a longer um, leg, uh, you know, calf line there. I just feel like it's more in proportion. Sometimes I draw proportions are off in the original sketch and then I'll, the next sketch will be, I'll try it longer. And uh, it, it usually ends up looking better. I'm going to have Kachu finger painting a smiley face here. Uh, that's her great art. And now I need to decide where does the circle go? So I found a top and a bottom I like, measured out the middle, and that's where I'll put my uh, compass. So there is the finished um, uh, transfer. And you can see how rough it is, but it really gives me the structure that I need to draw on top of. And uh, you can see from the original sketch that uh, where I'm going to be headed with this idea, you know, of course, this will have uh, the old fashioned blouse underneath there. Um, but I'll be at least this tight and a lot tighter, actually, since it will be 
for a cover and I'm going to try a lot harder to make, you know, the drawing look gorgeous. And we'll see where I end up. Uh, check with us next week to see how it turned out.